Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In the last lecture, you learned about ARP, the Address Resolution Protocol, and how it's required to allow communication between two hosts over an Ethernet network. The last lecture, you saw how it works when both hosts are on the same IP subnet. In this lecture, we'll cover how it works when we're on different IP subnets. So you already know that that means that the traffic is going to have to go via a router. So we'll work through an example for this. In the example, 172.23.4.1 wants to send a packet to 192.168.10.1. So that's two different IP subnets. So you see the sender over there on the left, the receiver is on the right, and we've got a router which is going to route traffic between those two subnets. So we can have ARP working the way it did earlier when both hosts were on the same subnet. If the sender on the left sends out a normal ARP request for 192.168.10.1, that will go out as a layer two broadcast and it wouldn't be forwarded by the router, so the ARP request would never get to the receiver. So obviously that isn't going to work. Also, we know that when we send traffic between two different IP subnets, it has to be sent via a router. So the sender is not going to send an ARP request for 192.168.10.1. It knows not to do that because it compares its own IP address and subnet mask with the destination IP address, and it can see that it's on a different IP subnet. So the sender knows that it has to send the traffic via a router, so it doesn't send an ARP request for the final destination. It sends an ARP request for its default gateway. So the sender at 172.23.4.1 will send an ARP request for 172.23.4.254, which is its default gateway. That comes from a source Mac of 1.2.3 of the sender. The destination Mac is, as usual, for an ARP request, f.f.f, the layer 2 broadcast address. And in the ARP request, it says it's a request for 172.23.4.25, asking it for its MAC address. That will hit everything in the 172.23.4.0 subnet, including the router. The router will see it's an ARP request for itself, so it will send an ARP reply. That comes from its source MAC of the 172.23.4.254 IP address, which was 4.5.6, and the destination MAC address is 1.2.3. The router knows to send it there because that source MAC was in the original ARP request. The sender will have been holding the IP packet that's intended for the final destination while it sent out the original ARP request there. It now knows where to send it to for the destination MAC address, so it will now send that IP packet. The IP packet will come from a source IP address of the sender, 172.23.4.1. The destination IP address is the IP address of the final destination, so that will be 192.168.10.1. The source MAC is 1.2.3, and the destination MAC is for that sender's default gateway, which was 4.5.6. So that packet will hit the router, and the router sees that it needs to send it to 192.168.10.1. 
the router does not know the MAC address of 192.168.10.1 because it hasn't communicated it with it before in our example, so it's not in the ARP cache. So the router will hold the IP packet from the sender on the left and it will send an ARP request for 192.168.10.1. That will go out its interface on the right, which has got IP address 192.168.10.2. So it's in the same IP subnet as the final destination. So it will say it's an ARP request for 192.168.10.1. It comes from the source MAC of the router's IP address 192.168.10.254. So that was MAC address 4.5.7 and it's an ARP request. So it goes to a destination MAC of the layer 2 broadcast f.f.f. That will hit everything in the 192.168.10 subnet, including the receiver over on the right. The receiver on the right will see it's an ARP request for its IP address of 192.168.10.1, so it will send the ARP reply. The ARP reply comes from its source MAC of 2.3.4, and it goes to the destination MAC of the router's interface on the right-hand side there, which was 4.5.7. The router now knows the MAC address of the final destination on the right, so it will send the IP packet. The IP information in the packet never changes. The source IP address is always the original sender, which is 172.23. 3.4.1 in our example, and the destination IP is always the final destination address, which was 192.168.10.1. The source MAC is the router's interface on the right hand side, which was 4.5.7, and the destination MAC is 2.3.4. So you maybe noticed, I'll just go back a slider in the example. Like I said, the source and the destination IP address never changes end to end, but the MAC address, source and destination, will change physical hop by physical hop. We'll have another look at that in more detail in the next lecture as well. Okay, so that is how ARP works for routed traffic. If you want to view the ARP cache on a Cisco router, the command is simply show ARP. And to clear the ARP cache, it's clear ARP dash cache. Let's have a look at that now in the lab. This is a continuation of the last lab where we covered DNS and where we had R1 at 10.10.10.1. R2 is at 10.10.10.2 and R3 is at 10.10.20.1. So if I jump onto R1 here and I'll do a show ARP, it's already done pings to R1 and R2. And let me just make this full screen and do it again to make it show up a bit more cleanly. And you can see that it's got entries in here for 10.10.10.1 where you can see the, the MAC address and it's reachable out interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 and also 10.10.10.2 the MAC address there and the interface that it's reachable out of. We could also have a look at R3 as well. So let me just bring that back up again. And if I go on to R3 and do a show ARP on here, I need to go to enable prompt first. So let's say end and then show ARP. And R3 is in the 10.10.20 subnet. So on there, let me just make this full screen again, just so you can see it a bit more cleanly. You can see it's got entries for 10.10.20.1 and 10.10.20.2. So that's how you see the ARP table on a Cisco router. It's very simple, just a show ARP. That will show you the known IP address, the MAC address, and the interface that it is reachable on. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.